A high school football season aging like fine wine as we take a sip of some district battles tonight, including our game of the week. Shane right here with Yanni Caracas. For the second straight week, we're treated to two one-loss teams in our game of the week. I could go for some wine right now, yeah, Shane. Right? In, in 15 minutes when we wrap minutes. up. <laughs> number two, Benjamin with a big bone to pick with number four, Cardinal Newman. The Crusaders beat the Bucks twice last season with the latter victory sending Benjamin home in the playoffs. And the Crusaders hosting the Bucks tonight looking for the third straight win over Benjamin. And tonight's matchup essentially serving as the district title because they're the only two teams in 1M District 5. Jack Daniels looking for that automatic playoff berth for his Crusaders. They led 10-7 at the break. Third quarter we go. Dylan Bennett on the carry. He's listed as a linebacker, but he can run the ball too. Down the sideline for the big gain, putting the Crusaders in prime scoring position. But Benjamin comes up with a huge defensive stop. Luke Warnock intercepted. The big turnover for the Bucks as they maintain that three-point deficit. And they cash in ensuing possession. Jaden Vega rolling to the big target. Amari Williams, the four-star athlete with an offer from every big program, puts the Bucks ahead with the touchdown score. He's all pumped up. Amari does it on defense too. Fourth quarter, Crusaders driving for the go-ahead score. He sacks Warnock. Warnock would leave the game temporarily, but his backup coming up big here, Jiron Hughley, the sophomore, buying time, dumps it off to Max Redman. And that is your go-ahead touchdown. Crusaders keep the lead and run out the clock. They're your district champs beating Benjamin 17 to 14. All right, the other team that beat Benjamin earlier in the season, number one, Palm Beach Central, that upset-minded Palm Beach Gardens tonight. Gators with a 7-0 lead here in the first. And driving, Keon Stevens finds Michael White the third. Nice gain across the middle and a first down. That will lead to a field goal attempt by Gavin Newby. And the kick is up and good. Look at this, the Gators chomping down on the Broncos out to a 10-0 lead. Central would eventually settle in though. Caleb Butler to a wide open knee. Drick Bolden looks like a busted coverage there. Garden still lead though, 10-7. The offense looking to respond. Stevens, a pass off the mark, tipped and mm. Tony Williams right there for the interception. The Broncos defense forcing a turnover. Offense back on the ball, Butler. At your service, fires a dart over the middle to Preston Parker. He finds his way in for the touchdown, but don't let the highlights fool you. Mm. From there, the Gators come back and down goes Frazier. Gardens beat number one Central 23 to 14. Wow, huge win for that program. 3M District 9 matchup. Dwyer visiting number five Atlantic Eagles. Just one loss on this season, first quarter. Lincoln Graff gets it to wide receiver Kamari Walcott. Flag on the play for that face mask. Give them a first down. Next play, Graff passes it to the seemingly always open Mark Hannaford. Nice spin move. Extends the play, putting them on Dwyer's 20-yard line. Later in the drive, Demarion Alberic, a fixture on our Football Friday shows, runs in the touchdown score. Atlantic in front on the ensuing kickoff. Panthers trouble handling that ball. Atlantic Cedric Roll. Recovers it and does some roll call. Eagles over the Panthers, 28 to seven. All right, Jupiter having a great season under second year head coach Jason Cradman and really turned this program around in a very short amount of time. Yeah, the number nine Warriors, six and one this season while outscoring their opponents, 227 to 46. So Forest Hill with their hands filled tonight. Yes, they did. Jupiter's only loss coming to Martin County since then. They've reeled off five straight wins. We get it started with the Warriors offense. Carter Simonson bagging this one mm. in from a short distance. Warriors lead 21 to zero with nine minutes left here in the second quarter. Falcons back on offense now trying to get something going. They're gonna get the ball to Carlos Morales. Watch him work. Trucks a defender and picks up a huge chunk gain on the play. A nice one, a big first down and more. Later on, Jupiter returning the punt. Nolan Hollinger making people miss. Starts right, jukes back up to the middle, heads out to the sideline. He's gone, but taken down short of the goal line. But have no fear, his teammate is here. Jay Morgan picks him up. Jupiter finds the end zone once again. The Warriors keep on winning. Jupiter now 7-1 with a 36-6 win. At 2-5, Lake Worth trying to finish the season strong with a shot at the playoffs. Trojans hosting winless. John I. Leonard scoreless first quarter. Lancers looking deep. 
But what a play by defensive back Kevin Abdul coming down with the interception in traffic. Still scoreless in the second. Jeff stuttered and no stutter here right into the end zone. He finds it and puts the Trojans up 7-0. Ensuing kickoff, Braylon Neal fielding that kick for the Lancers. Bounces outside, he has some speed, he has some blocks. Cuts back and he's gonna go to the distance for the touchdown right. Sadly for John I, flag on the play, so that touchdown is called back. Tough break for the Lancers that kind of night. More from the Trojans. Fourth down inside the 10, big boy. Vaughn Brainin bursts through, gets into the end zone. Lake Worth wins it 21 to six. All right, Palm Beach Lakes looks for its fourth win of the season, hosting Wellington. Remember, as a Lakes team that went winless last season, Rams up 23-14 in the third quarter. But here comes Wellington, Jonathan Paul, Near the goal line, rolls out and then spots an open Tony Collins. Easy pitch and catch. Wellington now trailing 24-22. We got a ball game. First play from scrimmage, though, following the Wolverine touchdown. Xander Raboost says, watch this. Breaks a few tackles. Mm. Yeah, you're not going to catch him. 80-yard touchdown. Conversion no good, though. So it's still a ball game. Ran still ahead, 30-22. to But guess what? The second play after that score, Wellington says, I see your touchdown. Mm. And I raise you another. Paul on the slant to Jalen Woods. Makes a catch, finds a seam. He's going to take it the distance untouched. The team's alternating touchdowns. But back come the Rams. Raboos with another great run up the middle. Big game, first down. Christopher Holmes would cap off the drive. Uh, Rams put up 60. Wow. 60 to 34, your final And the score. lights work. And the lights working at Palm Beach Lakes. Good job on that for the staff and the crew there. All right, coming up, Kings Academy goes to overtime with North Classical down in Miami and the Treasure Coast battle between Martin County and Vero Beach. That and a lot more play of the week when play Football action. Friday returns. I remember last year as one of the biggest upsets mm. last season. Martin County taking down a then undefeated Vero Beach, giving the Indians their only regular season loss. This year, Vero 6-1 going into their 
matchup of Martin County with district implications on the line. The Indians 2-0 and 4S District 12. The Tigers 1-1. One one. Sets up a good matchup, right? So you think. Both teams battling with Treasure Coast for the top spot in the district. No score first quarter. Tyler Aronson down the left sideline. Perfect pass to Jonathan Hillsman for the big gain in the first down. And from there, if you've been watching Vero Beach football, you know it's Octavian Osby. He's been a touchdown machine. 7-0 Indians lead. Later in the first, uh, Indians back on the prowl this time. It's a handoff to Hillsman. And he's going to bob and weave his way through the defense. A 25-yard touchdown run puts Vero up 14. And Vero gets his fourth straight win for easily 28-3. Number eight taking on True North Classical in Miami. Both teams six and one lines trailing second quarter. Joe Daly hits Reggie Workman, shakes the tackle, and takes it 50 plus yards for the score. Kings Academy now trailing 13 12 after Titans touchdown. Kings Daly short pass in the corner to Javian Jones. Conversion no good. Lions trail 20 to 18 at the break. In the second half, more from Daly. And more from Javian Jones, the pass down the sideline. Jones over the shoulder catch. What a grab, feet and bounds. That's a touchdown this game into overtime. Kings Academy coming back from Miami with a 40 to 34 win in overtime. Jupiter Christian coming up just short of making our top 10. Eagles six and one. Great season so far, playing at 5-2 Somerset Canyon. They're having a good season as well. Somerset already with a comfortable lead. And how about this for the first score of the second half? Jaden Harrington airing that thing out to mm. Joshua Hibbert for the long score. Cougars take the lead 28-0. Soon after, Cuba Christian finally able to put a drive together. It's Gideon Douglas going to sneak in for the score here. Eagles on the board. They need much more than that. Somerset had an answer for that. Harrington legs up with... Hibbert again, and the same result. He's gone. Cougars roll in this one, taking on the Eagles 48 to 7. Somerset Canyons having a solid season. All right, down 95. Boca Raton hosting powerhouse Cardinal Gibbons out of Fort Lauderdale, right to the third quarter. Gibbons up 10 7. Michael Mertinger on the quick slant to Jordan Roach, and that moves the chains for the Chiefs. Same drive. Patrick Anderson Jr. Runs it right up the gut and extends Gimbin's lead by 10, 17 to seven. Boca having some trouble stopping the Chiefs. Anderson hurdles the defender and gets the ball down inside the one yard line. And then Merdinger finishes out the drive, swings it out to Jeremiah Chalmers, receiving end of another touchdown. Gibbons tops Boca Raton 31 to 19. All right, let's take a look at our play of the week. It's coming from that Palm Beach Lakes game. Their 60 point performance against Wellington thanks to this guy, Zayer Xander. Let me get your name right. Raboost. Xander Raboost. What a name. It's the boost button. He's gone for the 80 yard touchdown. Raboost with our play of the week as the Rams beat Wellington. 60 to a robust robust 60 to 34 the final score for him. All right, let's check the scoreboard, shall we? Seminole Ridge, 20 point win over Park Vista, 34 14. How about the Eagles now? 6 and 2 on the year. Out in the muck, Glade Central handles Suncoast 41 to 3. Nova Southeastern University School shuts out Dr. Joaquin Garcia, 42 0. West Boca continues their standout season, 6 and 2. An impressive win over Northeast, 58-0. And a good rivalry game, Fort, Peace, Fort Pierce Westwood beat Fort Pierce Central, winning by a touchdown 2013. And Okeechobee had the offense working tonight, toppling Lake Placid 40-13. Jensen Beach, the number seven team in our top 10 poll, with a win over Sebastian, 40-14. Another busy day of college football tomorrow on WPBF 25 here at noon. Make sure you turn your TVs on as UCF tries to pull off the upset at number six, Oklahoma. Should be a good one. And then at 3.30, number nine, Oregon hosts Washington State. And then to wrap things up at 7.30, you should be feeling nice and good by then. A couple glasses of wine, a couple of pitchers of beer to watch the Duke Blue Devils take on Florida State. Interesting stat here, or I guess record book type game for uh, them, Yanni. Duke has never beaten Florida State. Now you got them in a top in 25 matchup. Yes, in football. Uh, <laughs> let's get that right. The Duke basketball fans are saying, hold up, wait a minute. Uh, back to high school football here. We're going to have a new number one coming 
next week in our top 10 because Palm Beach Central goes mm. down to Palm Beach Gardens. I was at that game. The Gators, man, from the very beginning of that game, they, they were thinking upset. The sideline was just incredible. Coach Higgins getting his guys ready. They're always ready. They have a lot of talent. Huge win. And then Cardinal Newman beating Benjamin, but Shane, the way it works, they're probably going to play again in the playoffs, yep. and that'll be back at Cardinal Newman, assuming they have the strength of schedule and such to host that game. And Benjamin, of course, with a lot to play for, um, coming up for the rest of the season, try to get as better positioning as possible in the playoffs. So we'll see how that happens. We'll see our, our top 10 shakes out next week. Have a great night.